What's the best way to tame recoil on your AR-15? We're taking a look at one of Ultragine's muzzle brakes, the very traditional Elfman speed safety for the AR, plus a few rail options from Midwest Industries on this week's Gear Grind. Hey, I'm Travis, the product guy at AT3Tactical.com. Basically, when we bring stuff onto the site, I'm the guy making sure it's going to be quality, affordable, cool, or a mix of all three. We want to sell stuff that excites us, stuff we'd actually use, not a bunch of crap. And now we're reviewing stuff requested by you, the viewer. So we've got some gear out here. Let's get right into it. By the way, I am always hunting for new stuff. So drop a comment down below if there's something you'd want to see in our store or me testing at the range. As always, we're hitting on the most important five F's when it comes to today's AR gear. Fit, feel, form, function, and features. And I'm going to try and get through it in about five minutes. Let's roll. Today, we're going to jump into these requests from our viewers, starting off with this huge Apollo Max muzzle brake by Ultradyne. So fit. Ultradyne makes the Apollo Max for standard 5.56 as well as 308 and 6.5 Creedmoor AR platforms. Instead of using a crush washer typical of most AR muzzle devices, Ultradyne uses a jam nut, which makes timing your muzzle brake very simple. You just need basically box end wrenches. Check out this video if you're curious to see what that looks like. So feel, um, obviously you don't want to, uh, you know, touch your muzzle device, but let's talk about how it feels in use. This thing absolutely makes recoil from 5.56 a non-factor. Your muzzle basically doesn't rise at all, but you are going to get a fair bit of concussion coming from these ports, which puts excess gas to the side and towards you. Wear your ear pro, non-negotiable. <laughs> Form. First thing about the Ultradyne brakes you'll notice is the attention to detail. Every brake and comp I've handled has an immaculate finish and the way they attach to your rifle makes for a truly seamless look. Everything here looks great and serves a function. Yeah, it's going to get gumped up with carbon eventually, but that nice nitride finish will clean up nice. As I mentioned in the field department, this thing is pretty damn loud and concussive, but it makes your rifle kick like a kitten. This recoil impulse is going to be very soft, which makes this ideal for rifles geared towards competition. Double up on your ear pro, keep your eyes on target, and this brake will do the rest. But be warned, if your competition scene involves shooting prone at all, the dirt this thing will pick up is going to mess up your sight picture for sure. Just something to be aware of. Features. What I really appreciate about Ultradyne's products is the efficiency. Between the ease of installation, the functionality of the brake being incorporated into a sleek aesthetic, and the performance gains you'll see on the clock, it's a very premium part, which is what you'd expect at a price point of over hundred bucks. If you want something that performs at a very high level with excellent aesthetics, I'd give this one a shot. Next up, the Elftman Speed Safety, which converts your AR to a more classic crossbar safety. So fit. This works in pretty much any AR pattern rifle, AR-15, AR-10. If it takes a mil spec safety, the speed safety will drop right in. Won't work in your KP-15s for those curious because you absolutely need to be able to remove the pistol grip. When you go to install, you'll also get a special detent from Elfman, which has a more rounded over tip than typical safeties. Make sure you slip that in ahead of your spring. Feel. So the speed safety, yes, is pretty damn fast. AR safeties typically are. Comparing this to the mil spec safety, just pushing your thumb onto the button instead of rolling over and flipping down, it's debatably faster. That's for putting the gun on fire. Putting it on safe, you can just nudge it with your trigger finger to put it back. There's not a whole lot of resistance, so it's definitely smooth, but you do have to break your pistol grip in order to put it on fire. Onto form. Very familiar vibe, right? Brings to mind the first days I got into shooting, whether it was using a Remington 870 or Ruger 1022. This does come in a black or stainless steel version, so you've got a couple choices for aesthetics. But what it comes down to is the classic look of a crossbar safety. A little bit boomer core, if you will. Function. So no real problems with the usability of this safety. You push it from either side, it snaps into safer fire position, pretty self-explanatory. But when you're talking about the safety of an AR-15, be prepared to invest some time and training to get used to this. Unlike a mil-spec safety, it's harder to tell at a glance whether the gun is on safe or fire. Red is dead is only on the right side of the rifle. For my part, I'd be careful on how you lay the rifle down to make sure you don't bump the safety by accident. Features. I always like seeing innovative touches to improve the ergonomics of AR-15 rifles, and this is a really unique way to bring classic ergos to a modern platform. Elfman executes the idea well in a very positive, easy to operate crossbar safety. That said, this is probably not for everyone and it wasn't for me. It's a good product, but its usefulness to you is down to personal preference and use case. 
This is a good fit in my eyes for hunting, competition, and in states where you have funky compliant grips. The safety probably makes a lot more sense for you. On a typical AR, probably not. Let's move on to my take on Midwest Industries AR-15 handguards. I have a Gen M3, but we'll be honing in on the G4M, Combat Rail, and Night Fighter M-Lock handguards. So, all these handguards work with AR-15 rifles, and they don't even begin to cover the full range of what Midwest Industries has to offer for the platform. All these handguards include steel barrel nuts and wrenches, require no timing, lock up nicely on forged upper receivers with their anti-rotation tabs. If you have a billet upper, check with the manufacturer to make sure they'll fit. Also, all these handguards have Picatinny rails up top, M-Lock slots all the way around for whatever accessories you want to attach. And there's a huge selection of lengths and models, so they work on a huge variety of builds. So feel, all these handguards have a very slim, comfortable fit in the hand, whether you go for a more natural support or the full C-clamp. There's no real rough edges to speak of unless you want to use the Picatinny rail as a cheese grater on your palm for some reason, and they're light. The Night Fighter is the heaviest, and I'll show you why, and the Combat Rail is the lightest. But all in, the weight differences at comparable lengths are pretty negligible once you get them in hand. Form. I will say, Midwest Industries always does an excellent job with fit and finish. The machining on these handguards is well done, no tooling marks anywhere, and the anodizing is a consistent flat black. These handguards aren't overly flashy, but they're also well designed. The different contours along the whole length and the signature notches around the M-Lock slots look fantastic. They make a great addition to pretty much any rifle. Function. Let's get into the differences here. The Combat Rail and the G4M are the most similar, with the G4M offering additional QD sling swivel points near the muzzle, while the Combat Rail reduces weight by an ounce or so with this scoop out of the bottom. Most people are likely to use the rear QD points near the receiver, so food for thought when making a decision. So where does that leave the Night Fighter? Well, the Night Fighter handguard has an elongated steel barrel nut, which supplies you with additional leverage to support night vision gear like laser designators and illuminators. There's a significantly lower chance that your rail will flex, which can throw those accessories off their zero. Features. Options, options, options. The great thing to me about Midwest Industries rails is that you really can tailor your rifle to a specific purpose and function. When I got the Generation 3 Midwest handguard you see here, I didn't know where I wanted my sling to live. This let me have a ton of options without investing in additional accessories just for the sling. These days, I'd probably spring for the combat rail and trim the fat up front. If I had a couple mortgage payments to drop on nods and a D-ball, you bet your ass I'd go for the Night Fighter. There's also lightweight options with shaved top rails if you're not planning to run lights or pressure pads, whatever else. It really is down to what you want specifically. On that topic of handguards, I don't know if you guys saw the AT3 Pro Quad Rail Randy threw on the Ruger S-Far from last month's giveaway, but he's got another one running right now through September. We'll link it below. I want to give a shout out to the viewers who suggested the Apollo and the Speed Safety for me to review. I really appreciate it. Had some fun trying some new things on my rifle, so Thank you, and I hope you all got something out of my bite-sized reviews. And as always, if there's a product you want me to go hands-on with, drop a comment below. I'll give you my honest take on it in a future video. Peace.